Hi, this is David. We're talking again about Azure Functions, and we're going to build an Azure Function inside of Visual Studio, which we've done in the past. Uh, I think I may have mentioned in an earlier video that Azure Functions, by default, are stateless, meaning that when you call them, they don't remember anything about the last call. Um, but there is a way of creating a stateful function. It's called a durable function, or sometimes a durable orchestration function. And it's really useful if you have some kind of workflow that you want to do, particularly workflow that might take a while. Uh, you don't want that thing to be running for a really long time because it's an inefficient use of resources and you'll get charged while it's running. Remember, remember, by default, Azure Functions only charge you while they're running. If nothing is happening, you don't get charged for that compute power. So uh, durable functions are a way of doing that. Now I have here a Visual Studio project that I've created and it has it three functions. Function 1, function 2 and function 3. They're all essentially the same thing. All they do is they write out this is function 1 or this is function 2 or this is function 3, whatever. Then they wait 10 seconds to simulate some sort of long-running workflow. And uh, then they have, they take in this message right here and they output the same message with a carriage return line feed with uh, function 1 done or function 2 done or function 2 done, whatever, and they return that. That's the return value. The message that came, the input message, followed by a carriage return, followed by function what x done. Something really simple like that, just so you can see it logging the output window. And by the way, I use this log warning because that shows up as yellow and it makes it a little easier to spot. Now from here, well, first of all, notice that this input parameter is decorated with activity trigger. trigger. That tells it that this is an activity function. It's not going to be triggered by an HTTP message or a, a, a message dropped in a queue or a database change or a timer. It's an activity. It's triggered by being called from a durable orchestration function. And that durable orchestration function is right here. And we know it's durable orchestration function because it has this or orchestration trigger here uh, on this durable orchestration context parameter that's coming in, in the run parameter. And in here, we're going to just, we, we initialize this message variable, and we'll pass it into each one of these functions. We'll call them asynchronously using the ctx.call async, so it'll all be part of the same orchestration. We'll call function 1, and then function 2, and then function 3. Each time we're going to pass in a message, and we'll get the same message back, and the output or of the previous function call will be the input of the next one. And when we're all done, then we want to log, output to the log, the final message, which should be something like durable function, and a carriage return, function 1, something, carriage return, function 2, something, carriage return, function 3, something. That's what we expect to see. So, But it'll manage this thing, and even though it's long running, we've got those tasks in there, are uh, those tasks, those delays in there, and that's to simulate something going, taking a little while. So, um, what uh, imagine uh, uh, an activity that that maybe takes a long time because it has to check something and retry it. Maybe there's some human intervention that has to come in. It says, uh, "I'm relying on a user to receive an email and to click on a link in that email." And it may take a while, it may take hours, it may take days, it may take weeks, they may go on vacation. Uh, and so uh, that, that long running transaction, we don't want to have this thing running the whole time. All right, so we've got this orchestration trigger, but um, this is telling us an orchestration function, but that doesn't actually trigger it. I mean, we don't have some natural trigger like a, a web request or a timer or a database change. This has to be fired off by another Azure function. And we've done that right here with the starter function. This one actually is the traditional function that we've seen. This happens to have an HTTP trigger on it. It can take the get or the post. We're using the default route, so it should be API slash the name of the function here in the URL. Uh, but you could also replace that with a database trigger or a timer or a queue trigger, whatever. Um, and in here, we're going to specify this durable orchestration client that we're going to use then to start asynchronously our durable function. This is the pattern that we use to start a durable orchestration function. And I've shown this pattern right here in this diagram where I've got the HTTP trigger fires off a starter function. The starter function does a start async of the durable orchestration function. And the orchestration function had called a function one, function two, function three. And they are in sequence 
and we can see that they're in a sequence because they have this await keyword. So even though they're called asynchronously, this await keyword ensures that nothing afterwards will happen until we get a call back from this. So this we'll get a call back from this, and then we'll then this one will run, then we'll call back from that, and this one will run. And that's why we can use the output of one as the input of the other. Order in this case is important. Okay, now it's time to run this function and see it in action. You see it launches, it gets all set up, everything's in order, and our starter function is triggered with an HTTP request, and there's the URL of the HTTP request right here. We said get or post was valid. So let's go ahead and copy this right here, control C, and then go into our browser and paste it in here. And if we just press enter, that will be an HTTP get request to that endpoint right there, triggering our startup function, which then we'll call our orchestration function, which immediately calls function one. We see the output of that is this is function one, and then we have a delay for 10 seconds. Comes back to the orchestration function, calls function two, which outputs to a log, uh, and uh, we wait 10 seconds for that delay. Goes back to the orchestration, calls function three, which outputs something to the log, waits 10 seconds, and then goes back to our orchestration, and we get the final return value, which is the concatenation of all of our starter durable function, and then all three of these, function one done, function two done, function three done, with a carriage return line feed in between each one. And we know they're in sequence because right here we have the await keyword, which says, even though this thing is called asynchronously and it doesn't lock up the application, the next line doesn't execute until we get a return from the line before, which is why we can use the return value of this as the input of that. Essentially turns that into a synchronous function. All right, in this video, I've shown you how to create a durable function that can maintain state over multiple function calls and use that in Azure durable orchestration functions. This is David. Thank you for watching.